Welcome everybody to our uh, monthly Radio Dead Air Tech Q and A stream. You have tech questions; we attempt to answer them. Myself, my name is Nash. I do this stupid show. Plus, I have over a decade's experience in technology. Mike over here, over there, that way. Mike over there's uh, got a, another long list. He's my producer on the show, and he does a whole lot of tech stuff as well. Obviously, not sound stuff. Obviously, not sound. We, we could have just done the whole episode of charades. We're like, okay, Mike, two words. First word. <laughs> no, that's three words. That would have been fun. No, it wouldn't. That would have sucked. Um, okay, so we've got some tech questions going to be answering tonight. And yes, people have been asking, I am going to put this up on YouTube tomorrow. This will be on YouTube. We'll start putting these on YouTube because people keep asking for it. And I will do that. And maybe we'll get more people watching when we do this, but because who, who knows? Maybe, maybe not. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to some news first before we get to questions. And this week, fuck me running. OK, so since Windows 10's release, there have been some privacy concerns about Windows 10. Of course. Mainly that it's sending way too fucking much data to Microsoft. Yeah, I saw those articles, and it's, it's you know, if, if, if you're talking to, what, which one's theirs? Is there's, there's this Cortina, right? Yeah, Cor yeah, Cort yeah Cortana, their Siri clone. Whatever. So if you're talking to Cortana and saying, hey, Cortana, find me uh, an Indian restaurant nearby, obviously you expect a little bit of data to go out. Yeah. And depending on what they, what they do to the data stream, you can look to see what it's sending. Right. Um, you know, if it's encrypted, obviously you can't see a lot. Uh, but when you're saying I've shut off everything that would possibly normally communicate with Microsoft, except, you know, patch stuff, and it's still sending uh, lots and lots, and we're talking megs of data. Um, yes. Uh, probably building up to gigs over time, obviously. Oh. Um, but uh, that's a problem because no one's entirely certain what all the stuff they're sending is. And it gets better. Everyone okay. out there was saying, ha ha, it's great. You people who updated Windows 10, you suck, because now you have to deal with this. Well, guess what? Microsoft sent out backwards patches. So if you're running Windows 7 or 8, guess what? You're, you're doing the same thing. You have the same privacy problem as everyone on Windows 10. Because Microsoft and the patches did not list that they would be doing this to Windows 7 or 8. Did not list this anywhere in the changes. It just said like it was updated security fix. Pay or no, whatever. For, you know, yeah. for this component, for this component. And now the, the, the additional problem uh, on top of the what data is it sending is there are some people out there who are unfortunate enough to be on a metered connection. Yes. Where they, they have a, a finite amount of data they can send and receive each month without incurring significant fees potentially and if they go over that they got to pay monies which sucks and so microsoft sending all this data on a daily basis yeah uh, builds up really quickly so some of you are out there going well it's on windows 7 it's on windows 8 it's on windows 10 what can i do i have a solution for you i do no it's not linux shut up whichever one of you jackasses linux is it linux it's not linux there is a wonderful thing on the internet, because the internet is wonderful. Um, yeah. I am going to send you to a wonderful site right now. Um, now I'll put it in our channel, and I'll take it out right now. Um, no, I won't take that out right now. Whoa. It's a site called Fix Windows 10. The website I dr address is fix10fix10.isleaked. I-S-L-E-A-K-E-D dot com. And on this site, it'll take a while to explain. On this site is all the instructions you need to get this shit out of your system. Off uh, Windows 10, Windows 8, they have instructions on how to fix it. They have uh, instructions how to disable it during the installation how to fix it after the installation and what patches to remove from Windows 7 and 8 to make this problem go away for you too. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Now, 
keep, keep in mind, some things will still, little bits of things will still get sent here and there. It's, it's just how it is. But this will clamp down on the majority of the bullshit and tell you how to avoid it in the future, which... Until Microsoft takes this function away from you. Yes. At which point people will start uh, handing out what IP addresses it's communicating to, and they'll put that in routing tables, so you just block it locally. Yeah, you have to, well, you have to block it in your router. Did you know this? The thing overrides your host files. What a pain in the ass. So you have to block it in your router, because it overrides, it overrides your fucking host files. What is that bullshit? That is indeed bullshit. Host files, for those not aware, is uh, a thing on your computer that says uh, when an IP address or a range of IP addresses is, is put in, uh, go to this other location instead. This is how uh, a lot of ad blockers, not all of them, but I think a lot of them work. They say, well, we know this ad company, uh, which is, you know, the big name, whatever, comes off this range of uh, IP addresses, add them to the table so you don't even see the ads. It's routed to, you know, uh, local loopback. So it says, yeah, load this out. Oh, there's nothing there. Yep. It does absolutely nothing because fuck them, because sometimes you just don't want to go there. But we have we have other news this week about privacy issues. This whole Internet of Things is getting fucking ridiculous. And people didn't. All right. Samsung recently had a problem with their fridge, their internet connected fridge. Okay. Which apparently had such lax security, it allowed people outside access to your network via the Wi Fi in the fridge. In the fridge! Okay, my first question, and I understand that there's people who, who you know, want to wire up everything, uh, but why does a fridge need Wi Fi? Well, it can keep track when you're low on certain items and tell you when to reorder them. Mind you, you could just look in the fridge. Exactly. Now see, one of the earliest internet of things that was ever done, and this is a wired thing, uh, and I want to, the story as I heard it was from MIT, but fill in tech school here. Yeah. I think it was really MIT, but was about a soda machine that was in the basement of the building. And the computer labs were on the sixth floor. And uh -huh. so the students in the computer labs did not want to go all the way down to the basement to find out, oh, it's out of Coke. So they wired it up to tell them. So they wired it up so they could see, so they could ping it and, and, and see, hey, this thing is out of Coke, but it still has grape soda. And so, you know, obviously for yourself, you go down there, oh, it's out of Coke, I'll just get a Dr. Pepper or whatever. But when you go, I'm getting a soda and nine people hand you change. <laughs> and now you're suddenly having to go back and go, well, they didn't have this. What else did you want? Right. It's the multiple trip thing. So by wiring it up, they're able to solve them. So, you know, when it's six flights of stairs or a ele uh, long elevator right away. Uh, but what the, sure. The... Your fridge is generally going to be one floor away. Well, the problem here is also this is something people apparently did not know is a thing. There are Wi-Fi light bulbs. Oh, yeah. The Philips Hue being the most prominent. What these are is these are light bulbs that you can control with your phone. And you can set up your whole house with these light bulbs. You can turn your lights on and off across the internet. And you can set different colors to them and all stuff with your phone. Yeah. It's called How to Screw with the Dog When You're Not Home. <laughs> What's happening? I am a dog and I do not understand there are demons in this house. See, the cat's generally not going to care. The cat's going to go, it's light, it's dark, I'm a cat. I give no fuck. The dog is going to lose his shit, so. How to give your dog PTSD with remote control. Yes. Now, now, the thing about all these is, these are convenience items, these are things that do neat tricks, but the security is not being put into them. And the next one, no. that, that th th this is kind of alarming. Um... This came from uh, Ars Technica this week. One of these that you would hope would be very secure and the leading uh, nine leading manufacturers, they're not. Baby monitors, internet connected baby monitors. Nine models were tested and they were found to have hacks that expose the, the camera's control and operation to the internet. Listen to this. 
One Indiana couple reported someone hacked their two-year-old's baby monitor and played the police's every breath you take followed by sexual noises. Okay, until you edit the sex noises, you know, uh, there's, because the, if you were doing sex noises and you're going, I'm going to play what I think the baby should listen to, <laughs> you know, just music, you know, uh, talking heads up all night. <laughs> that, that's funny. Uh, uh, dance, magic, dance. That's funny. Uh, sex noises. No, the kid. Okay, the kid's young enough. He's not gonna know what the hell they are anyway. That is. But, that is. Actually, wait, no. This is the parents listening. To, well, I suppose there are two ways, so you can talk to the kid. Because there are there are two way monitors. I remember a, a, a British comedian. Uh, he was on a panel show, and, and he was talking about how he'd gotten one of these things. Uh, for his kid and you know, in a hotel and they've got them in the separate rooms uh, and the kid starts being really fussy and so they talk to the child through the monitor and say everything's okay We're, your parents are in the next room and there's a, a real moment of silence and then the kid goes okay wall <laughs> so I, it's not surprising that they're hackable um, well, it's just, this is, it's not just that, it's so bad. I mean, listen to some of this. Um, Phillips Insight B120 establishes a direct com connection to the camera's backend web application onto the public internet, unencrypted and unauthenticated. By brute forcing the possible host name and port number combinations used by a third party service provider, an attacker can locate an exposed camera and is able to watch the live stream, enable remote access, or change the camera settings. Um, the baby, the iBaby M6 is a web service that allows easy access to other people's camera details by changing the serial number in a URL string. Oh, yeah. The Summer Infant Baby Zoom web service contains an issue where the method of adding an authorized viewer to the camera does not require any password or secret key for access to the feed. This means by iterating through a user identifier on a URL, an attacker can add an email address of their choice to every single camera and log in at will to the view the stream of any camera at their choosing. Okay, um, so obviously this has huge creeper potential. Uh, not just that. The big problem is, is if you can access one of these devices, an access access to any device on a network is access to the network. Yeah. You can find a way to get into... Once you're on the network, you're in every computer, every device that's attached. Once I mean, unless, the, unless they VPN things off. And yeah, I most don't. Most people yeah. aren't going to do that. No, uh, and I look at this that that last one you mentioned, the summer infant baby Zoom web service. That's a two hundred dollar device. Yeah, and they couldn't build in better security than that. Oh, listen to this, this, this. Um, the equal equally alarming finding of the Rapid Seven study is the response of manufacturers when they receive private reports of the vulnerabilities that were found. With Let the, me guess, it was largely eh, fuck it. No, worse. With the above mentioned exp uh, exception of Phillips. None of the others res responded with an expected timeline for producing fixes. One unnamed maker was impossible to contact while several others didn't respond. Some companies questioned the motives behind the research and asked why they should respond at all. Because people are going to fucking hack them whether people are researching this or not. Saying it's not a problem, it's going to go away, no one's going to do this, is not the same as they're not actually being a problem. This, and this is why, while all this Internet of Things shit is kind of neat, don't touch it. Yeah. What I think um, might be the better route for some companies to go with. I mean, Apple could do this easily. Google, less easily. Hmm. And that is provide a secure protocol that you can leverage. Because Apple can say, you want your app on our store? Right. You've got to use this. Android, not so much. They have an Android, open not so much, because it's a, a more open uh, operating system. Well, still, in general, what's going on here is you have people who, up until now, their job was making baby monitors and 
thermostats and you know all these other devices that have never been connected to the internet. And now it's there now market is saying we've got to put it on the internet or we're going to lose market share. And they have no experience with securing devices. They have don't have all they haven't worked with the computers and cell phones and all these other things that over the years have built up a large backlog of best practices yeah. for device security. And now we're just throwing all of these devices on the internet with people who've never made internet connected devices before with no just clue about the, the world of hacking, the world of vulnerabilities, just any even basic security steps that internet connected devices need to have. That's not going to change until we have some fucking catastrophes. And it's gonna it's gonna be more than just you know, uh, you know a thing here, a thing there. And what's gonna happen ultimately, and I guarantee it's gonna happen sooner rather than later, is for example using these baby cameras, someone is going to use the information available via these things to determine when parents are home and when they're not, and either rob places, which is bad, bad enough. Uh, or kidnap babies. Yeah. And I think that actually may have already been an episode of CSI Cyber, um, <laughs> which is a little shaky on their tech occasionally, but it might be good at scaring people. There's, there's a reason that key points of our nation's infrastructure are not internet accessible. Yeah. There is no n internet. To, there are some places like like nuclear power and all the power grid and shit. There is no network access. There's a uh, reason for that shit. Well, some of them have network access, but should shut it off. <laughs> but yeah, there's a reason this shit should not. So until folks, until we, and this is the sad fucking thing to say, because you cannot change the way these businesses operate until we have a massive internet of things calamity where either someone is hurt or potentially hurt or some big nasty thing, companies are not going to change the way they're making these things. And, and until even then they won't until someone passes a law saying they have to. Right. So until then, don't buy these things. They might look neat, but there is, it's the Wild West out there. And it could potentially compromise you in ways that you won't find out until much later and it's going to be bad. Um, so... Let's move on to something good that is going to be quickly destroyed by legislation, I feel sure, or by a lawsuit. Okay, what do we got? Okay, Netflix is fucking wonderful. I fucking love Netflix because there's always something on there I can look around and find and I can just binge watch, binge watch old shows and it's great. But I'm in a- I can totally see you being into Orange is the New Black. Fuck yeah. Dude, have you seen that show? No. It's amazing. I am. No, you were joking, but I am because it's amazing. It's horrific, but it's amazing. No, um the if you have if you happen to be one of the people out in the uh in the country where you don't have access to say uh regular cable or what or dsl internets or even fiber you don't have access to any of that shit you happen to be one of those people who's stuck relying on satellite or even yeah. dial up and satellite is expensive as a motherfucker except they have a wonderful little loophole okay most satellite have unmetered usage from the hours of midnight to 5 a.m. or even 3 a.m. to 8 a.m. Because at those points, that's when there's lowest... No one's using the fucking internet. They don't fucking care. Otherwise, you're getting metered service with monthly caps between 12 to 30 gigabytes. That's it. So if you want to do your downloading, you have to set it up for the middle of the night, that like when no one's the fuck awake. A wonderful service has popped up that is... And I... The, the lengths they have gone to to make sure their service is legal is astounding, and it's still going to get sued out of existence. It's called Night Shift. Okay. What it does is you can set it up to cache your uh, Netflix stream.
at a certain time of night. This is something you normally can't do. You can't download Netflix now. Oh, so Netflix is the one going to be suing them. Well, Netflix and everybody else connected to it. What it does is you can download it like a DVR. You can only access it through your net. The way they've set it up is you have to log into Netflix and access the files that way. You can't just watch the files. All the digital rights management stuff that Netflix has in place remains intact. You cannot just download the stuff and watch it like on any computer. You have to go through the Netflix interface. You have to have a valid Netflix login and a valid Netflix account to watch these files. They've gone through every link they can to make sure that this is, you know, they're, 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 they're keeping they're, to, they're, they're legal ish as, as legal as possible. Well, they're relying on the 84, uh, Supreme court Betamax ruling. Time shift, time shifting. Yeah. And you know, for people who, and even for people who don't have data caps, it's still kind of awful the way Netflix just burns through your bandwidth usage. Oh, yeah. And um, actually, and we need to back up a, a just a second here. For people who uh, are, are not old enough to remember what time shifting was, th this was a Supreme Court decision. When uh, Betamax and VCRs, Betamax was a type of VCR before, it was a different type of tape cassette. Because wow. many of you probably don't remember VHS. So, <laughs> uh, in many ways, Betamax was superior, but it didn't have, it didn't yeah. get the share. So, uh, but the people who made Betamax was it Sony? I think it was Sony. Yeah, anyway, they got sued by pretty much everyone everybody who made TV and movies and movies because it was how dare you allow people to record stuff. And the Supreme Court said, well, since they have to have a legitimate way to have gotten this data to begin with, you know, this, why, why not time shift it? And so the Supreme Court said, yes, you can time shift it. We don't care. Now, the Supreme Court said, if they start taking what they've made this way and start making massive copies and distributing it, obviously that's still right. a copyright violation. But time shifting itself for your own personal use is yeah. perfectly fine. Now, keep in mind, this, this is, they, they compared the VCR. This is a quote you can look up. The head of the uh, Motion Picture Association of America compared the VCR to the movie industry, what the Boston Strangler was to women. That is an actual quote. Yeah. They, for, they keep, you don't even remember this. We had to fight for the right to watch stuff when we wanted to. That was a thing that, they, that the copyright industry felt was not a right you could use. It, you had no right to watch. You had to only watch things when they said how they said. And they still hate it. They still hate it. That's why when Netflix and things like, oh, when any other new service popped up, mm -hmm. Redbox, etc., they all said, oh no, that's horrible too. We don't like that. And, you know, in some cases it was for different reasons. Oh, Redbox is violating our exclusivity agreements or whatever so it's it's the same sort of deal and i think these guys are on better footing yes night shift people are on better footing than uh arrow which from last year i think yeah. you remember them yeah they these were people who arrow was people who had made a uh, an array of little tiny antennas mm -hmm. and basically what they sold you was an antenna and a dvr connected to that antenna and you so, could download from that DVR to your computer because it was your antenna and you were watching on your, you were had your right to watch over the air broadcast connected to that antenna and it's still lost. Still lost. Well, the reason it lost, I think, if I remember correctly, was because it was, oh, this broadcast is happening in New York, but you're in Cleveland. Well, you should be using a Cleveland antenna, not a New York antenna. They eventually ruled they needed to be regulated like a cable provider, and they tried to get regulated by a cable provider, and they wouldn't give them the license for it, and yeah, that killed yeah. them. It was it was like, it, it was damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, so I think Night Shift, it, I think it's a really good uh, product. It look, just looks like it here. I think for people who have that sort of, you know, between midnight and four in the morning, you know, unlimited download, it's, it's going to work well. Um, whether or not uh, they'll be sued, I don't know. But I think they're on. They're going they're to on, be sued. 
they're on solider legal standing than than other services. And that doesn't you have to understand the American legal system. It does not matter if you're on solid legal footing. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying they won't be sued. I'm saying I think their odds of winning are better. Yeah, but it's not. This is how our American legal. For those of you who are not in America watching, this is how the American legal system works. Go, taking someone to court is not about determining wrongdoing and finding fault. It is about spending so much money that the other person trying to defend themselves goes bankrupt in the process and by, by default loses because you outspent them. Yeah. Now, who will stand up and help defend them if they get sued? No, no. Uh, EFF might. Well, this, this kind of is a big deal because we, we take for granted that our infrastructure for internet in America, if you're in a, in a large metropolitan area, you've got fairly decent, not great, fairly decent internet connection. But a whole lot of this country doesn't. Lots yeah. and lots. There are still people who are stuck with dial-up because no one will run cable out to them. No one will run fiber out to them. Even DSL, their switches are too far away from their location. We have and, uh, there's there's government funding available for all the various companies to provide expanded rural service, which they don't. And, and well, many of them just recently took a bunch more funding to do this. The standout on this for taking funding was Verizon. Verizon said, uh, nope, screw that. We don't want that money because it came with too many obligations for Verizon. Yeah. They, 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 and the ones who do take the money, like AT and T, has taken tons of money to to do this, and has not for a period of about ten years. They swore up and down they would be doing this, yeah, and they have dragged their feet, but they continue to take money to do the thing they are not doing. So this is this is a very important thing. You know what? I hope they win, but I already know this wonderful thing that will help a lot of people whose internet connections are crap to have access, legal paid access. That's the other thing. Everyone who's using Night Shift has to pay for a Netflix account, which means they have to pay the people legally to get the, all of this. Are they paying? Net, are they playing Night Shift as well as Night Shift a second service? I think I think Night Shift is a second service as well. Okay. So yeah, I I don't. Part of me thinks the issue's not going to come from Netflix themselves because Netflix won't ultimately care. They're not being damaged unless unless the Night Shift serve or the, the service is easily hacked. Um, unless you know it exposes some sort of vulnerability in, in Verizon that people go, oh look, this is here, and yeah. we can just download whatever the hell we want. Um, I think where they're going to get sued most likely is from the companies that license stuff through Netflix that are saying, well, no, this is, no, we don't like this. You have to sue them for us. Well, it's going to get worse. Um, they may extend it to other services like Amazon Prime, HBO Now, and Hulu. Okay. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to cause them all to team up. Yep. Finally, for the news segment tonight, um, one of the big problems with gamers and laptops is that in order to provide the power for high-end graphics, you need a high-end graphics card, and those tend to run hot and be more require more electricity than a laptop can provide normally. Unless you've got a really massive power brick on there. <laughs> well, there's... There... of my head. There have been two solutions to this, and one of them I've liked has been, um, I believe, uh, Alienware uh, produced this. It's actually a little box that can contain a video card, and it's got its own power supply, and via, um, I believe, it's the USB 3.0 or some, one of the new high-speed standards, or Thunder Thunderbolt, I think it was using that for a while, you could connect it to your laptop. So it's a desktop graphics card. You can connect to your laptop and use that as your graphics card. Okay. And, and it was portably. And that seemed like a reasonable solution. Asus has a crazy ass solution. Oh, well, it's Asus. They generally do. I want you to look at this shit. This is bananas. The Asus Republic of Gamers GX700 Water-cooled laptop. Uh, 
a, a moment. What they have done is, okay, I'm looking at this. Is I, I have to ask, is that first picture I'm looking up, which shows the back of this thing? Yeah. That's just a huge radiator there. Right? That's just a huge radiator and water cooler pump. How loud is this thing? I don't know. I don't know how much it costs either, but listen. Now, the stats on it are, are actually pretty good. It has the same shader units, um, about the same base clock, uh, the same fill rate, all these other things. Um, eight gigabytes of dedicated G, uh, DDR5 as the, the same as the high-end GTX 980 GeForce Ti. So it does have an, it, an incredible power to it. It's got the same power as a desktop's graphics card. Um, and the way they do this is they overclock the uh, GTX 990M GPU. It's the mobile version. They overclock that son of a bitch. And the way they keep it from melting the fuck down is this detachable, and this is the part that concerns me. I'll scroll down a little bit. You can see it's a detachable water cooler. Um, those little silver plugs there that you can see in the middle of it, those are, are those snap into the back of your laptop that go into water pipes that run through your laptop. This thing looks like an accident waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. And also, goofy as shit. Yes, but you know someone's going to use it and in a professional gaming environment. This is... is because they, I think it'll give them an edge. This is one of those... those you know, you spent so, mu so much time thinking that if you could, you didn't stop to ask yourself if you should. This is ridiculous. I shudder to think how much this thing is going to cost. There's been no word on price of this thing. Does it give any indication of how hot that thing gets? Because my first, obviously the first concern is, okay, it's multiple leakage points. Because if you've got something that disconnects and reconnects regularly. Yeah. You've got wear and tear. Yeah. You know, gaskets, what have you. And second, obviously, you know, uh, when water heats up, as this will do, it yeah. wants to expand, which means this is going to be under pressure. Which means sooner or later, when this thing leaks, the leak will happen under pressure. Pressure! Pressing down on me! Pressing down on you! Sorry, sorry, you kept putting it in my head. I couldn't stop. We're gonna Press have... up! I'm just wondering if we're going to have steam burns. <laughs> You mean aside from early access games? Oh! Oh, I went there! Oh! And don't oh! Oh! So yeah, this, um... Here all week, folks. Here all week. Does it, sure, tip your waitress. It doesn't give a temperature on this thing. It doesn't say... Is dedicated uh, external cooling. Take uh, the It's just, it's a ridiculous, this is a ridiculous device. The Asus Republic of Gamers GX7000 17-inch 4K portable gaming machine will cost around $4,000. Holy! Holy fucking Christ! I think that's, Four? That, that's when you've officially crossed into the more money than cents. 4000 for that! Whereas Alienware, mind you, if you bought, okay, let's add up the price. An Alienware laptop, high end, $1,700. With this add-on box, that's about another $100 for the, uh, for the graphics card box. And maybe if you're going to go super high end graphics card, I mean, balls to the wall, crazy on out. That's another $600. So $700 for the graphics card in a box, $1,700 for laptop, $2,400 for an Alienware with a desktop level graphics card that you can detach and much more portable than this fucking thing. Because this. Well, Alienware does sell, sell a uh, $4,600 laptop, so. Well, yeah, but even even with, uh, with the, the best thing about the graphics card box is 
You can swap it out for a new graphics card. Oh, there is that. When the one you have gets outdated, you could get an updated one. You can get a newer, faster one and plug it in there and use it across the uh, the connector. That That is... Uh, this, you're stuck with that 990 forever and you're going to look like a doofus. What the... I mean, look at that. That is not even very... That's not very sleek. That's not very ergonomic. It looks like a fucking boombox is what it looks like. So in the first picture on there, what is that? Is that one of the cooling pipes coming out of the back right of that thing? I think it's the cap, the, the cap end of one of the cooling pipes, yes. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Well, maybe you can open this thing up and replace video cards in it, too. Nope, it's the GTX 990M, uh, which is hard, so hard soldered to the motherboard. That's a ball, that's a ball socket, uh, solder. Okay. Nope. You fucked. You fucked. So that's just the cooling unit there. In the that's just the cooling unit. That is a water pump and fans. Yeah. That is redonkulous. I can uh. see so many ways that's going to go wrong and someone's going to set their dick on fire. <laughs> Pressing down on me, pressing down on you. Sorry, I it just it's, it's no, it doesn't it doesn't go as well as steam burns pressing down on no no. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we actually got a few more questions. I didn't think we'd have a lot tonight, but we did get a few more questions tonight. Okay. Um. So it's time to look into these. Uh. We get questions from people for our tech Q and A. Our first one, and I don't think I sent you this one, but I'll read it to you. This one comes from Jeffrey Miller. Okay. And it's Windows 10 related. Um, Jeffrey Miller writes, I recently updated to Windows 10 and now my SD card reader and Bluetooth won't work. The SD card reader isn't recognized and when I would open up the Bluetooth settings, the window would open but disappear after a few seconds. Tried updating the drivers, but with no luck. Unfortunately, I uninstalled the Bluetooth driver thinking it would help installing the new one, but now that's not recognized either. I downloaded what should have been the newest drivers from the company's websites but they won't install. Windows Update sees this and downloads drivers for them, but they can't be installed. Please help me, as the Bluetooth isn't a total killer, but I dabble in photography, so I need my SD card reader. Okay. Well, the, the fortunate thing I can say on the SD card reader is, fortunately for you, they're cheap. So well, if we can't fix it, I don't want to use that solution, but... yeah. I mean, it, worst case, all right, we're going to start with the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you're going to have to go down to Office Depot and spend $10 on a USB to SD card connector. Yeah. That's it. It works just like a flash drive. You plug it in one of the USB ports. That's the worst case scenario. Now, you might spend a few extra minutes looking at it and going, it doesn't have a Windows 10 logo on it. I'll chance it. If you have to chance it because it, you're not sure, see if you can find one that does not have to be cut out of its plastic enclosure nah. to actually use as plastic case to be used. That way, when it doesn't work, because you'll probably have to go through one at least, that's my guess, nah. uh, you can take it back and say it doesn't work under Windows 10. Now, all right, first off, I did a little bit of research on this. You're using, he's, his system is a Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series, series 7548. Okay. Um, now let me make sure I've got this absolutely correct. Um, cause I went to Dell's, uh, support page and the seven, four, seven, five, four, eight. Um, looking at the drivers for this and I made sure we're looking at the windows 10 drivers here. It, Ooh, interesting. Um, are you sure it's a 7458? A 7548? Because this might be our first problem here. Um, because the 7548 does not list an SD card. Dun, dun, dun. If it's an external SD card reader, then yeah, absolutely. Just re I I'd say just replace it. I mean, I I'm sure you don't want to have that as your... Um, now, on the off chance, th then who was phone? 
Um, on the off chance you mistyped uh, your model number, um, I'm looking on the 7000 series here, and I am attempting to see which one they use that's a standard. The one I found... Come on, come on back. Come on back. I believe it was on the 7537. I love they just love how how wonderfully obtuse the model numbers are for Dell stuff. Oh yeah. And you can't just sort of start plugging in random Dell. Here's the thing, if you plug in random numbers, try to Dell on Dell cycle, and I think I remember the number, but it's maybe I transposed a couple. Dell's doesn't say no such model exists. It goes, no, that model's temporarily unavailable. Well, um, the model that Dell, the chipset that Dell appears to use is the Realtek RTS 5227 slash RTL 8411B. Um, that's listed under the product page for the Dell Inspiron 157537. Um, there is a Windows 10 driver for it. That's going to be the first starting place I would recommend you look. And again, that's under Dell's Inspiron 157537. Don't worry, this is getting recorded, so I'm going to put it up on site tomorrow so you'll be able to look at it. I would try manually downloading that driver and attempting to run it and see what will happen. If that does not work, my next instinct is, and this is the problem that I was anticipating when the fact that Windows 10 only allows for upgrades and not clean installs. My fear is that the process, there's a reason most tech people prefer to do a clean install of an operating system as opposed to an upgrade. While an upgrade can be very convenient, upgrades also leave behind leftovers especially if we're talking about windows registry the windows registry is in the first time we're talking if the first time you hear us talk about it the windows registry is a long list that's built into windows that gets written to and expanded as time goes on it tells every part of windows where everything should be and what everything is it tells it where files are. It tells it what drivers to use. It tells it this, that, and the other. It is the, the, the memory of Windows. And one of the problems when you're upgrading from one version of Windows to another without doing a clean install, wiping Windows clean, and starting over fresh is potentially something from the registry, from your old version of Windows, carried over to the new one. The reason this is possible is because there are so many different types of computers with so many different kinds of configurations, the chances of accounting for all of them are impossible. So there's always some kind of glitch that could potentially pop up. This may be what has happened to you. What may have happened is on Windows 8, the SD card driver was reading fine and the registry said, this goes here, this here, here. And when you upgraded to Windows 10, the registry said, well, it was working fine 10 minutes ago. I've got the list right here. It says it is. And if it's not working now, it's not my fault. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> Essentially, this means you may have to do a clean install. Now, fortunately, since you've already done the upgrade to Windows 10, with a little bit of looking, I would look for, uh, let's see, what is it called? Magic... Magic Jelly Bean is the software. Um, Magic Jelly Bean is a free bit of software that you can Google for Magic Jelly Bean and you can find it. Um, it will let you go through your computer and look up all of your keys for all, all of your license keys for all of your registered products like Windows or Office or any of these. It will let you get the product keys for them and keep them just in case you don't have them anymore. And because of the way the um, upgrade worked um, with the Windows 10 upgrade, it generated you a Windows 10 legitimate key when you upgraded. You'll have to use Magic Jelly Bean 
to find that key, copy it, then get the Windows 10 download tool. And when we say copy it, save it off, print it out, something. Somewhere off the computer. If you can select the, the text it pops up with and print it out in large font, that way you can make sure, as I have done, um, not to go, well, is that a G or is that a six? Son yeah. of a bitch. Um, By the way, there's actually uh, Magic Jelly Bean. You don't necessarily need to use Magic Jelly Bean. There is a script right. uh, I have somewhere that will do it. It's a simple VBS script. It's, Magic Jelly Bean is just, it's easy. It's out there. People yeah, know yeah. it. Um, I can't download that at work, though. So. <laughs> You're showing off your nerd, di nerd dick. Look at my nerd peen! I didn't write the script. I have it at work. Um, you'll need the Windows 10 download tool. Again, just Google for the Windows 10 download tool. Use that to make yourself a USB installer for Windows 10. Install Windows 10 clean, then get your drivers back. Hopefully that should work. If not, you may be in a bit of that gray area right now where the drivers aren't really kind of finalized for Windows 10 because, well, we're in upgrade season. Yeah. So your last best option is head to Office Depot, spend $10, get the USB to SD card adapter. I would go to getting a strange echo there. I don't hear it. Okay. Uh, I hear no echo. I do now. What the hell did I do? <laughs> well, I'm not hearing it on this end, so it's fine. Okay, I'll just ignore it then. And it went away. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, what I would do is honestly go to Best Buy or a computer store, because they're more likely to be able to help you than Office Depot, which does all sorts of office stuff uh -huh. and has a small amount of computer stuff. But yeah, those those are our best suggestions because already, like I said, using the uh, product number you gave me, that model doesn't even have an SD card driver listed, which is weird. So it might be because Dell does this. Um, they tend to the SD card driver might be bundled under something else, such as input devices or maybe, bias drivers maybe. or something of that nature. Uh, and the problem is they won't necessarily tell you that's where it is. You're sitting there going, oh, I need to find a, an update. Where, where the hell is it? And so you end up potentially downloading all your drivers going, well, which one? No, it wasn't this. No, it's okay. It's not this. It's, and yeah. It's pain in the ass. I, just to, I also have a Dell laptop with an SD card reader, and I've had this exact same problem with their drivers. So it's not just you. I don't know what it is. And their Bluetooth. I've had problems with the Bluetooth on the damn thing, too. So, all right, let's see. Well, well we haven't answered this Bluetooth question. Uh, Bluetooth should be similar, you know, drivers, yeah. et cetera. Um, the other thing to check, uh, Windows 10 was supposed to integrate uh, Bluetooth more in depth into the operating system. So, you know, for devices and things. So it may just be, uh, again, a compatibility issue where yeah. it's, uh, your 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 device is not Windows 10 certified or Windows 10 rated, so it's they may never have a driver for you, depending on how critical the device is to you, how much you really want it. Now, uh, you uh, may just want to replace it. You may just go, you know, whatever with it. it. It's we're really early in the Windows 10 upgrade process, so they may have new drivers for you next week. Isn't upgrading fun? Isn't being Maybe an early never. adopter awesome? Early adopting is awesome. Yeah, I still haven't upgraded to Windows 10 here. It won't, me either. It, it won't, well, I won't say it won't let me. It's saying, yeah, you're still in the queue. All right. Um, this one's, next one's from Sonia Waffles. And she says, I'm moving to my mom's place and I want to invest in a really good router as I plan to do more streaming of video games and drawing and such. But every router I buy is crap. Even when I up my cable internet speed, no matter what brand I buy, no matter if it's wireless or wired. Any advice, tips, or recommendations? Asus. Asus 6, was it 66U? Uh, 66U. I believe they have a newer version of that now. Uh, let me look it up. 66U is what I'm using. Asus AC66U. I believe they're actually up to the 68U now. 
Let me look. Yes! Uh, yeah. 68U. Is in fact, it was actually referenced in that uh, Night Shift article yeah. that we had up earlier. The Asus RT AC 68U wireless AC 1900 uh, dual band wireless router. I have the slightly one model down, the 66. It's a fantastic router. It's not cheap. It is, let's see, uh, about $120. I see Tiger Direct has it for $120. Um, so compared to your 20 or $30 router from Walmart, it's not cheap, but you get what you pay for. And with this, you have more RAM included. You have, um, better bandwidth, three, uh, wireless antennas on it. Um, plus very good wired networking, a wonderful interface to use. I love being able to go into the wire. It is so, so simple to program that, that router and access the, the, the web interface. It's fantastic. Um, don't, honestly, that's, that's a personal recommendation. Your mileage may vary, but yeah, the Asus. Yeah. Cause you didn't also, you also didn't tell us what routers you've tried. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to bet you haven't tried anything over $50 which could uh could make a difference i'll type that type it in the channel ac 68u the basis rt ac 68u um yeah because sonya's in the channel yeah um so yeah it, it's it's i i would go with that um i've so someone else uh, someone else in the channel is saying don't get the 68U. It's a terrible router. The 66U is much better. I've tried Linksys, Netgear, D-Link. There's your problem. Well, there's your problem right there. Especially D-Link. D-Link. D-Link should be called F-Link because it fails. These are all, the Linksys, the Netgear, these are all the cheaper end routers, and they're, they're crap. All of these little routers, if you could go into Walmart and buy these, all these low-end routers, they're awful. They work-ish. Yeah. They... I want to say we brought this up in a uh, previous episode yeah. where... So the chipsets for almost all the routers out there are the same. So the, the, the main chip that's being used to do this is from one or one of two or three companies who then sell out their stuff to various other companies who slap their own brand, externals, firmware, etc., yeah. packaging on it, and go, here you go. Now, the way chips are made... Chips are tested various ways. The chips that pass all the tests, flying colors, get sold off at a premium. Those that didn't do so well, but are still with, well within limits, sold off for less all the way down. And when you get to the bottom of the barrel, you get to the name brands you've never heard of. Yeah. And then right above them is D-Link and Linksys. Yeah. Who I'm sure will be upset if we were more popular. But it's their own fault. Yes. I, 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 because... I, Another thing that cheaper routers don't do, and it's it's overlooked, but it's so important, they don't put any RAM in the damn things. And you would think, why would your router need RAM? Your router is essentially a little computer. That's what it's doing. It's a computer whose dedicated job is passing your network data information. In, data out. And in order to do that, it needs a memory cache. It needs space to hold that data so it can, and if it fills up too fast, it can't send the data out anymore. That's why yeah, so having it'll more... send signals back to the computer that's talking to say, "Hey, I need you to slow down." So that's why you'll see a, a a router. It says, "Oh yes, it's rated for this speed." Well, yes, because the chip they bought is rated for that speed, but because they haven't put any any memory into it to support that, it will get half, maybe two thirds of that, because the cache is filling up. Oh, Alan in the channel brings up a good, uh, Alan B in the channel brings up a good point. He says, "I'm the sad SOB who has the Comcast router camp combo. Can't do much about it since my parents use Digital Voice." Yes, you can. Yes, you actually can. You can disable the router part of that router modem combo and use it solely as a modem. Then plug it into a better router, like for example, an Asus router. Um, you, you can, it will still do the digital voice. It will still do everything else. It just won't be your router anymore. That's the, uh, once you shut off the router part, you can put a good router in there and you're fine. Much improved. 
So that is a possibility. And they don't tell you how to do it. You have to call Comcast, unfortunately. It's annoying. But you have to call Comcast and get them to, to help you set it up properly. But once you do, you can use any router you want, and it's a significant improvement, I promise. Yeah, because it's also, it's, uh, you said, you know, you can't do it. You know, they won't tell you, how, they won't show you how to do it. They have to do it. Is I don't think they let you log into the thing, right? So they have to set it into bridge mode for you. But once they set it into bridge mode, you tell them, look, I want better coverage of my house wirelessly. I want more memory in my router. I would like to use this router. I'm still using your modem. I would just like to use my router. And they'll ask for some information from the router, uh, like MAC address, things like right. that. And uh, they may or may not come back and say, oh, you can't use that. That's not certified with our equipment. Bullshit. Yeah. Um, Hang up. It doesn't it get doesn't a new have tech. to be certified with their equipment? No, it doesn't. Not for oh, a router. They really need the MAC address. Yeah, routers do not need to be certified with their equipment. With, with routers, nothing has to be to be Comcast unless, certified. Oh, unless you're in a business environment where they have that policy. Yeah. Well, that's different. But, yeah. All right. I'm gonna do one more question tonight. Um, it's from Diego. Uh, the desktop on my room sucks all the internet at the house, yet it runs slow as fuck. On my laptop, I have no problem downloading stuff or streaming 1080p videos, but the moment I turn on my desktop, my internet goes to shit. It's super slow, both on my laptop and my desktop. On my desktop, I'm using TP-Link Archer uh, AC 1750 wireless PCI adapter. I don't know if it helps. I don't think that's it. Um, my gut feeling on this one, the first thing you need to check, since your laptop is working fine, what you need to do is, hopefully you're running Windows 8 because it makes it a whole lot easier, but if not, you may still have access to this. You need to open the resource monitor in Windows. Resmon. Um, Resmon, yeah. Open the resource monitor in, in Windows. It, it's also in Windows 7. Ah, I'm, I'm opening up my screens and shit. Open that up and see how much traffic is going on on your desktop. Because... My gut is telling me something on your desktop is using a whole lot of bandwidth. Now, here's something else. One thing to look at, and, uh, you know, you say you turn on this and your, your desktop and laptop go to hell. Well, that, that uh, desktop uh, device is uh, wireless Ethernet, hmm. PCI. Uh, you may be having frequency issues between that, that and the laptop. Good... So, uh, if you have settings you can change in the TP link, uh, I channel. would check. Yeah, channel, play around with that. If you can set them to, if they're on the same channel, that could be a problem. Maybe. If they're on the same uh, uh, band, that could be a problem. That one is capable of 2.4 and 5. So what I would try is have the laptop on one of those and the desktop on the other and see if that helps any. Assuming, of course, your router is 2.4 and 5 and you can have them both on at the same time because some routers can't. Hmm. Yeah, just but my gut is telling me um, another thing to try. See how the Internet's reacting with other uh, connected devices, not just your laptop. If your laptop, your desktop's all you got, it's fine. But if you can check with your phone and see what your speed is on your phone and see how that's reacting down low too, because that that could, could uh, my gut is telling me something is running on your desktop that's using the bandwidth that probably should not be using the bandwidth. Yes, uh, and also this might be a good time to uh, check uh, various spyware programs and see you know, anti spiral program, see if you have something on there yes. that is using up your bandwidth. Run malware bytes. Run malware bytes on the system. Um, that would, that, yeah, uh, someone else asked, uh, this is a quick question I can cover while we're doing this. Um, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Well, well I'm actually looking at, uh, in Resmon, there's a network tab. It's on, it's the far right tab, and it will show you processes with network activity. And, uh, you can select those processes and it will show you in the little panels on the right uh, 
what those bandwidths you know look like how much how much is that all right uh okay this will be our last one we'll, we'll finish up here um there are several antivirus programs out there i was wondering which one is is actually the best to use how do you make sure you have completely deleted antivirus from your computer there's a new one it's uploaded so they don't end up fighting with each other and killing the computer. Yes, if something has happened to someone I know, the old antivirus had been fully removed, caused their computer to die because it fought with the new antivirus. Um, well, personally myself, I use the built-in Windows Defender on my system, and for deeper scanning stuff, I use mal Malwarebytes. Um, that's all I've really ever needed, and I, I've caught every problem that has ever popped up on my system. Nothing's really gotten through that's caused an issue. Um, how to get them off? Uh, normally, a good a good way to go about doing that is check the manufacturer's website and type in, like if you're using Norton, for example, uh, Norton Antivirus, go to Google and type in Norton Antivirus Remover or yeah. Kapersky Remover. Normally, they make special programs, the companies themselves, that will clean off stuff. Yeah. Anything and that's... If you need a moment of humor while you're doing this, go on YouTube and look up McAfee removal for the video of John McAfee talking about how you remove the software for the company he used to own. It is hilarious. Especially considering he's a tremendous meth head. That's not yes. a joke. That's the. That... I, I, I don't know about myth. I know he used a lot of. Drugs. A lot of drugs. 